On this episode, I'm going to share with you how podcasting has made me over a million dollars and how there's so many other opportunities that agents need to capitalize on for revenue. If you're an agent and only focused on commission and closings as your means of revenue, you're screwing up. You're leaving potentially millions of dollars on the table. And so I'm going to share with you some opportunities and some other revenue streams that are available to you if you just think outside the box and put them into work. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode 283 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am your host, Dustin Brome, and I am getting ready to head out to two different conferences. I'm going to be in Orlando for the EXP shareholders event that I'm speaking at. Actually, I think when this podcast comes out, it will have already happened. Nonetheless, so I spoke at EXP shareholders and then uh, the Agent Rise Summit in Fort Myers, Florida as well. And hell, by the time you hear this, I'm back home. So I didn't need to say any of that. Anyways, uh, it's busy. It's getting busy. I'm having fun and it's going to be cool. I love getting out there and just talking to agents because it helps me see what the needs are and what's happening and where agents are struggling. And one thing that I'm noticing right now a lot is due to market conditions, right? Interest rates, lack of inventory, um, all of the above. And look, we can't blame it all on those things, but those things definitely make it harder to do business. Uh, there's still agents crushing it and selling hundreds and thousands of homes, but not hundreds of thousands, hundreds and thousands of homes. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you could be the first that sells hundreds of thousands. That'd be fucking awesome. Why not? Right. If you're only focused on income from closings, then that's risky. It, it, you need multiple streams of income that are all related. What I mean by that is you don't need to go out and start a store for this and go out and do this and then drive Uber and you know do all these other things for other revenue streams. There are other revenue streams that are sitting there right next to you, available to you, but you're not picking them up. You're not taking advantage. So in the intro, you heard me say that I've made over a million dollars from podcasting. I am a real estate agent. I'm a realtor, a licensed agent that decided to start speaking to the internet through this podcast, which has now made me over a million dollars. In the beginning, at least, I was still selling homes. So this was all additional. I'm going to explain to you where that comes from as well, because there's a lot of misconceptions about where the money comes from, from YouTube, from podcasts, from, uh, from all of this, right? From creating content, even if you get millions and millions of views, which I don't really. I mean, over the course of months or years, yes. But um, you know what's crazy? I've never had a, a video yet yet. I have not yet had a video get over a million views. Well, it's time. And maybe by the time this comes out, that'll happen. Shit. Anyways, I need to just set the record straight and smack some people. I, I'm, I'm going to smack you a little bit. There's income streams and revenue opportunities available to you right now, just by doing what you're currently doing that you're not taking advantage of. Okay. So we'll smack you there. And there's some misconceptions about where money can come from if you're a content creator. So I'll set the record straight and tell you where my million dollars plus has come from uh, through podcasting, because it's not like, you know, uh, Apple is paying me to put my podcast on the platform, not how it works. You know, I'm not Barack Obama. I'm not being paid a hundred million dollars from Spotify to do a podcast there. Um, not, not the case. It's very different. So this is going to be a very educational show for you. That's going to give you so many ideas that you just need to execute on. You just need to execute on them. So as I announced last week, we have a few spots available for our first ever power day in Salt Lake. This is a workshop where you and me are, we're going to sit down in person for a full day and the night before at dinner. And we're going to, we're going to fix and work on all of the things in your business that need to be improved. We're going to implement, we're going to do, we're going to put things into place. This is not a conference. This is not a training. This is an implementation workshop. And so because of the nature of that, there can't be 300 people there. There can only be 20 maximum. There's still a few spots available. I'm inviting you. If that sounds good to you, if you want my personal help to work on your business, to solve problems and to implement and to do, and to fill in all those missing pieces, then you need to be at power day. 
So to get all the details and to get your ticket, just go to PowerDayEvent.com and get it right now while available. And after you grab your ticket for Power Day, make sure you go over to TryKCM.com slash BAM. Get yourself a free trial for Keeping Current Matters because this is the tool. This is the platform that's going to keep you up to date on what the hell is happening, what you need to know about housing trends, economic data, interest rates, inflation, how does it affect mortgage rates, how does it affect buyer demand and seller demand, all those different things. And if that gave you a headache, yeah, that's my point. That's exactly why you need Keeping Current Matters. So go get a free trial of KCM right now. Try kcm.com slash BAM. Let's talk about making money as an agent. Obviously, what most agents do, 99% of agents, is you sell a house, you get a commission check, boom. There's a lot of agents who also will refer a client to someone, they will help the client, that other agent that you referred the business to, they will help that client to buy or sell a house. Then they'll send you a referral check for 20, 30%, whatever, after it closes for the referral. That's great, that's some passive income. I freaking love giving referrals because that means as long as you're giving them to agents that can actually perform and actually serve the client, make sure you're giving referrals to great people because if not, there's no you're not going to get a referral check if they suck. But when you refer business to great agents, that is another stream of income that you're not working for. You're just making an introduction and they're paying you for giving them a client. It's a beautiful thing. So referrals also kind of a, a standard within the industry. But surprisingly, what's not a standard is thinking of yourself as a marketing company and offering your services as such. What I mean by that is this. I was in a... I was in a, a training within our, you know, my EXP team or, you know, there's a, a big organization of us and there's these big team leaders that all have, you know, 20, 30, 50 agents on their team. And they're all talking about how when they give referrals to a roofer, to a contractor, to a plumber, to whoever, uh, a landscaper, they will actually ask for a referral fee for passing on that business. And there's, there was a lot of pushback from solo agents that are like, well, I just give those referrals, you know, just to be nice. Well, sure. But here's what's interesting. Those companies, the roofers, the contractors, the plumbers, landscapers, uh, painters, you name it, they are all spending marketing dollars to get clients. So they're spending hundreds of dollars a month over here on this. They're spending $1,000 a month on Thumbtack and Angie's List and blah, 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 all these places, right? Just like we do as agents. What you need to realize is if you're willing to pay someone, uh, pay another agent 25, 30% to give you a client, why wouldn't another service provider be willing to do the same thing? Well, let me bottom line it for you and sum it up for you. They are willing to, but you aren't willing to ask them for it. You think that somehow there's something weird or shady or slimy about that. There's not. What you're saying is, hey, I have a client for you. They need their roof replaced. Would you pay a 10% referral fee for that client? Whatever the amount is, it doesn't matter. My point is, you're just giving away all this, all this business. Well, how, how many deals do you get from your roofer? How many deals do you get from your painter, your plumbers, your contractors, your landscapers, your lawn care people, your gutter specialists? None. They don't give referrals to agents. Maybe once, you know, randomly. If you've gotten more than one referral from one of these service providers, kudos to you. Uh, but that's not normal. So it makes perfect sense when you hand deliver them a client to ask for a referral fee. It just takes understanding of the situation. So there's a huge opportunity there. And, and five out of five of these big team leaders all do something very similar within their teams. They all do that. They go to these service providers. Now they make sure that those service providers are great, that they work with them, that they have experience with them. But as long as they do, and they would vouch for them, you know, the preferred vendors that a lot of you guys have a packet for, or maybe you, you went a step, a step beyond that and you have a page on your website and you just have all your preferred service providers. Well, what these team leaders do is they're like, wait a minute, this this exposure, this is valuable to those service providers. So why aren't we asking for a small amount in return? These companies are already spending money on marketing. Why wouldn't they sp pay you $200 a month or $50 a month, whatever it is, to be listed as the preferred painter on your website? 
or to be in your preferred vendor packet that you give to all your clients at closing. They would. You're just not asking for it. There's a huge income opportunity here to supplement your income. Okay? And, and even if you're not making an extra $10,000 a month doing it, if it's an extra $200 a month or an extra $600 a month, well, over the course of the year, that pays for a client appreciation event, right? If you're getting $200 a month in total from having six different companies on your website or in your buyer packet, even if you're getting 20, 30, 40 bucks a month from each one, but it all ends up to 2,400 bucks at the end of the year, what does $2,400 in a year do for you? That could, that could have paid for uh, a VA's services for quite a while, for a large chunk of the year. That could have paid for a client appreciation event. It could have paid for um, a marketing campaign. It could have paid for a month or two or three or four of ad spend. You're just not thinking like a business owner. And this is the problem. This is why so many agents fail is you're running your own job. You don't realize that you're running a business and you're not acting like you're running a business. Therefore, you're not really. You just own your own job and you could have a very high paid job, but nonetheless, it's not operating as a business. Once you start to see yourself as a business, you start to act like one. And once you realize the situation I described where you're hand delivering a client to a roofer, for example, and they're, you know, it's going to be a $15,000 roof replacement instead of just, here you go. Hey, I have a client for you. Would you be open to paying a 10%, a 20%, whatever referral fee for this client and see what they say? Some will say yes. Some will say no. Some may negotiate with you a little bit on it, but if you get an extra $500, an extra $300 for that referral, and then you do it again with the next client and again with the next, you see where I'm going with this? This shit can add up quickly. And so if you are constantly like, oh, I don't have $300 a month to do this. All right. I don't have... It's absolutely inexcusable to not have $300 extra per month coming in to invest in something that you know is going to be worthwhile. It's crazy. It's just a bullshit excuse because honestly, you're being lazy. You're being lazy and you're stuck in your comfort zone. You're not willing to ask if they'll pay you a referral fee. It's because you are insecure about it because you think that you're taking in that situation. You're not. You're giving them a client, a, a contractor, you may be handing them a client that's going to do a $100,000 renovation. Is that weird for you to ask for some referral compensation? Let me ask you this. If you, if you were going to refer one of your close clients who's moving out of state to, a, to another agent in the state they're moving to to help them with their purchase, wouldn't you ask for a referral fee? Do you think that you're being slimy? Do you think that you're over, overreaching by doing so? Of course not. Just flip the roles. It's just a matter of perspective. So stop leaving money on the table. Put systems, put programs in place where your the exposure that you can get for these service providers is of value. You just need to start charging for it. Most of the big teams already do it. Why can't you? Why can't you? If you have a well-visited website or a you know your social media uh, like your link tree and your Instagram bio is getting a lot of traffic. Well, sh wouldn't a service provider like a painter pay to be on that list? If I was a painting company, I sure as shit would. Of course, hopefully that opens some eyes a little bit. Um, let me switch gears a little and talk about some of the other things you can do to earn income. So one thing that I did Originally, it was not really, I knew that it could become a business, this podcasting. I, I knew that the Massive Agent podcast could become a business and a brand at some point, and it certainly has. In the beginning, I just took the first step without seeing the, the full staircase, so to speak. I just knew that it could lead to a brand and other revenue streams. So I just did it. Well, I, in, in the beginning, thought I'm going to I'm going to get a bunch of listeners, then I'm going to get sponsors, and then I'm going to get all this money, right? And, and yes, if you have a bunch of listeners, you can get sponsors to pay you to do ads on your show and, and for you to recommend their product. Make sure that there are products, services that you actually recommend, that you actually use and have experience with. If you've, you've noticed, there's not a whole lot of other brands or companies that I recommend here. Follow-up boss, huge. I love them. I've had a relationship with them for a good year and a half or so. Um, 
because they have one of the best products in the industry. So I feel very good about that. And I get feedback from you guys saying, I wish I would have done follow up boss sooner. Massive agent podcast.com slash follow up boss. Oh, by the way, to get a 30 day free trial. Then there's, there's been some others, uh, keeping current matters. I mentioned them. And then I, you hear me talk about my massive agent society program, right? The coaching program. I launched that as a way to better serve you guys. It as an extension of this podcast, because this podcast, this is a one way thing, right? Even though, yes, I get some sponsorship dollars from some, from some of these companies and it, probably not nearly as much money coming in from that as you'd think, unless you have like Joe Rogan numbers or barstool sports or Dave Ramsey podcast type numbers, which we don't, you know, this is one of the top three podcasts in real estate, but that's a small niche. So, or niche, I say it different every freaking time. On, on our Massive Agent Society weekly call earlier today, I probably said it different every other time. Anyways, niche, 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 whatever. You get the point. But unless you have hundreds of thousands or millions of listeners every month, you're not getting paid big dollars for sponsorship. Where the real money can come from is, and this is for YouTube as well. YouTube, even if you are getting enough views on your YouTube, to get paid by YouTube through AdSense. Maybe it's an extra 500 bucks a month. Maybe it's a thousand or 3000. The real money comes from selling the houses that, so you're offering something indirectly, right? So with this podcast, I launched the massive agent society as the way to better serve you guys. So that rather than just me speaking to you and you listening and hopefully getting what you want, the society is a way for us to work together. So there can be, actual two-way interaction and we can talk to each other and you can say, here's what I need. Here's what I'm struggling with. And I can help you with that. That's why the society was built. So that is a way of monetizing the podcast indirectly. So the massive agent society I've made much, much more like, I don't know how much more, lots more money from that than from direct podcast sponsorship dollars, at least 10 times more, I would say ish I'm guessing, but around there. So the podcast has led to revenue from the coaching program. It's helped me build my EXP team. And, and, you know, we have about 300 agents now in 37 states and four countries, U S Canada, South Africa, and Mexico. Yeah. Amazing. International company, international team. Pretty cool. But I've been able to partner with you guys and work with you guys through this podcast. So that's another indirect way of getting revenue coming into the business without me selling homes and without it coming from a sponsor of the podcast. Hopefully what you're starting to see here is if you, and look, if you don't have a podcast, that's fine. But YouTube channels don't think that the YouTube channels it's, itself and that the views are going to make you rich. Yes. It could supplement your, your income for, for sure. For sure. I, I know a couple agents that are making three to three to $6,000 a month, but they're getting, hundreds of thousands of views every month. That's a lot, but they make the most money by far from the homes they sell to the people who watch the videos, right? Those views turn into people who buy or sell houses. And that's where the real money comes from. It's the indirect income. You see how this works. So just know the game. So you can think creatively. If you're going to launch a podcast thinking that the podcast itself is going to bring in a bunch of money you're missing the boat. There are other things that the podcast could lead to and point to that you can really make some good income from and really serve people with. So that's kind of how I've done what I've done. That's how I've built what I've built. That's how I've been able to make over seven figures, um, from this podcast. And, and it has not just come from like how many listeners listeners we get it's indirect sources of that. Um, in the beginning I was getting referrals from other agents. So, you know, that was another great thing. I still get referrals from time to time from you guys who are looking for a great agent in Salt Lake city, which even though, as you know, I don't personally sell anymore, but my team here on the ground does, and they're better than me anyways. So keep the referrals coming. What I want you to walk away from today is just hopefully a realization that you're thinking small and acting small. You're leaving so, so much money on the table because you're so focused on just commission. If you just put some other things into play, 
Uh, the brokerage you're with can pay you to bring other agents to it, like mine does. And my old brokerage, okay, I, I came to EXP from a flat fee brokerage that was, um, it was just $500 per transaction from me, okay? Flat fee for me, not for the clients, but uh, $500 is what it cost me every time I, I sold a house, whether it was a $100,000 home or a $2 million home. And um, that brokerage would pay me $100 if, if I brought an agent to that brokerage, whenever they sold the house, they pay me a hundred bucks. Cool. Great. A lot of brokerages do something like that. Take advantage, take advantage because a lot of you are getting asked by people, Hey, who should I join? Which brokerage should I go to? You may as well be with one that'll compensate you for that. Some brokerages just compensate you so much more because they make you financial partners with those people, right? Like with, with the way that I have things set up, Everyone who's part of my team, everyone that works with me on the massive agent team, they don't pay me a cent. It doesn't cost them any extra money in commission. There's no commission splits with the team. It's just with the brokerage. And then the brokerage pays me whenever they sell houses. So the game becomes, how do I help you sell as many freaking homes as possible and get as many other agents who sell as many homes as possible to all be part of our organization? That's where the money comes from. So that is available to you as well. Some of you, I'll speak plainly and frankly, you're just too damn stubborn to, to leave, to go somewhere else. If you're perfectly happy, legitimately perfectly happy where you're at, then don't leave. That's fantastic. Just do the other stuff. But if you're like, oh, I'm at the best brokerage ever, but then you're like, am I really? Maybe you should look at what else is out there because there's other revenue streams not just my brokerage, but others that will give you stock whenever you sell houses. Uh, there's so many other ways to make money as an agent. My whole goal here is that you open your freaking eyes to the possibilities. If you are struggling and, and you're on this, this roller coaster and you're like, I need a commission check, you need to supplement those commission checks with other revenue. And it's all right there if you just take action in a few different directions. Some of them may take bold, decisive action, like switching brokerages. That's a bigger decision. But off, you know, saying, hey, I'll put you, Mr. Painter, in, in my preferred vendors package that I give to all my clients for $100 a month. That doesn't take a big, bold leap. That just takes, I don't know, asking someone for $100. It, it, it's as simple as understanding the value that you provide them and then asking for the sale. All the big teams do it. They're supplementing the hell out of their income. Why can't you? The, the, the Spoiler alert, you can. You can. And hopefully, more of you do after this episode than not. If you're one of them, if you're going to be implementing anything that I mentioned here, please send me a DM on Instagram. Let me know what you're doing. I would love to hear what you took away from this episode. This is why I do this show, to help you sell a bunch of homes and to become more profitable and ultimately to build a business. The goal is eventually to help you not sell any houses, but to have all the homes being sold on your behalf within your business. There's a big difference. Thank you for listening to the show. If you found value in this episode, please share it with another agent that you are linked up with. Share it with your broker, your team leader. Share it with agents that you're friends with on social. Share it in your story. Tag us at Massive Agent. Go out there and get it because there's so much damn opportunity if you just know where to look and then do the thing. Thank you, guys. See ya.